Welcome to week four of the Easter season. We're looking at the Sunday, April 21st here at A Cartoonist Guide to the Lectionaries. I'm Steve Thomason. I'm an artist, a seminary professor, and a pastor. And every week I look at the text from the Revised Common Lectionary and the Narrative Lectionary, and I pull together all of the visual resources that I've created over the last 30 years and I've put on cartoonistbible.com, and I put them all on one page just for you so that you can study, preach, and teach these texts. So let's dive in. All right. This is week four. We're looking at April 21st uh, as we work through this Easter season together. Uh, if this is your first time on my channel, welcome. Uh, just to make sure that you don't ever get lost, if you want to find the lectionary resources on cartoonistbible.com, just hover over the resources uh, menu tab and look at lectionary guides. Click there and you will find your way to the week that you're looking for. So this is the week of April 21st. And so every week what I do is I put together a quick link to the texts from the Revised Common Lectionary and the Narrative Lectionary. And for your convenience, uh, each one of the texts is linked to biblia.com. So you can read the text. Um, it's always good to start with the text itself um, from scripture before you're doing any kind of visual interpretation. Um, so I've got all the text for you. And also these blue buttons are links to the respective pages on cartoonistbible.com. If you want to dive in and just see all of the resources that I've got out there. Um, every week I, I stop and invite you to join us because every Monday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time here in Minnesota, um, we have a Zoom call. So it's not just in Minnesota, of course, people from all over the world, we join together on Monday afternoons and we study these texts. So I would love to have you join us. You just click here and jump over to Cartoonist Bible Network. Join the network. You can be part of our Monday Bible study. And um, if you want to try it out, it's got a seven day free trial. And if you join the network, you can download all of my resources for free. Yes, you can. So anyway, I hope you check it out. We'd love to have you. Um, now into the texts. Again, if you are a narrative lectionary preacher and you want to skip the RCL, just click here and it'll take you right down to the narrative lectionary text for this week. Um, I like to look at all the texts for you on this video. So here we go. The first reading for the revised common lectionary is Acts chapter 4 verses 5 through 12. Uh, during this Easter season, the RCL is walking through portions of the book of Acts. And I just finished illustrating the, the book of Acts last year, uh, created a 43-page graphic novel, and that's what these images are from. So this is page six. You can always click on these links if you want to dive into the, the entire book on the website. Um, so the reading starts in verse five. And Peter is on trial before the Sanhedrin, before the, the council in Jerusalem, because he has been um, healing people. He had just healed the man last week, and now he, he got arrested for it. And they tell him to stop doing this. And so that is the passage. Now, I've got one big download, one big mega pack where you can download one time and get all 597 slides, 597 JPEG images, and the PDF of the graphic novel in one click. So uh, each week what I'll do is assuming that you have that pack, I'll just tell you what slides uh, correspond to the text for that week. So if we go to slide 62, um, let's see, 62, yeah, it'll take you back. You might wanna roll back and give your people context that Peter and John have just been arrested because they healed this man. So they bind him up, they bring him before the council. And the way these slides work is it walks through each word balloon and each panel so that you can just tell the story to your people as, you know, maybe as you're reading the passage, as you're preaching, however you want to use these slides, they're yours. Um, use them in whatever way works best for you. Uh, my biggest purpose for this is to create context in a visually interesting way. So there you go. Just click this button to download that big old mega pack. 
Now, each week, uh, the Revised Common Lectionary always has a psalm, always has uh, a second reading. And this year, during Easter, the RCL is going through 1 John. Unfortunately, I don't have any visual images for that letter. Someday, maybe I'll have that. Um, and ironically, I don't have any images for Psalm 23. But I'll tell you why they chose Psalm 23 is because the gospel reading is John chapter 10, verses 11 through 18, which is commonly known and often called the Good Shepherd passage. And so um, I have a PowerPoint that will just walk you through the story. And this is just the text of John. However, I also have some additional resources. Again, you can down, just click download on Gumroad. You can download that particular PowerPoint. But I've got two other resources for you this week because I, first of all, I love the Gospel of John and I have taught on this passage a few different times. So let me just share a couple resources. First of all, if you click here, um, I, I spend some time visually walking through um, how the Good Shepherd text is actually in a broader context of the healing of the blind man. So you have to go back to the beginning of chapter 9, where Jesus sees this man who's born blind. He spits in the mud. The man goes and washes himself in the, in the pool of Siloam, which harkens back to actually the creation of the Adam uh, from the Adamah, as God created human out of the mud. And and then there's this, this blind man who can now see is testifying about Jesus and he's run out of town. And so the man comes and finds this blind man and asks if, if he trusts that Jesus is who he says he is, that he's the son of man. And so this blind man can actually see. And the irony of this, and I think that the narrative reason, the theological reason for this story in the Gospel of John is actually about the blindness of the religious leaders because Jesus is using this man who was born blind, who can now see, to show that the, the people who are supposed to be able to see the kingdom of heaven and the Messiah are blind to the truth. And so it's in the context of these religious leaders eavesdropping on Jesus that Jesus tells the parable of the good shepherd. And he says that he is the gate, he is the good shepherd. And the key voice, the key word here is that they hear his voice. Now, uh, I've got this other resource that goes uh, a different set of visuals. I drew this long before I drew the cartoonist guide to uh, John. Um, it, it does the same type of thing. But what I like about these visuals, first of all, it, it, this one keys in on Jesus says, I am the light of the world, right? The light of the world which exposes the truth. It's about seeing. And he's the light of the world. There, then there is the gate and there is the good shepherd. But here's the key right here. I am the good shepherd. My sheep hear me. They see me. They know me. It's about the, the people who actually recognize the good shepherd. And the people who don't recognize him are the ones who are supposed to actually be the shepherds of the sheep. So there's a lot going on in the Gospel of John. So I hope that these uh, different sets of images might help you at least to just understand the text a little bit more deeply, and you can feel free to use these images any way you want. Okay, so that's it for the Revised Common Lectionary, kind of a Good Shepherd Sunday. Now, if we go to the Narrative Lectionary, as the narrative lectionary is working through the book of Acts, it makes a huge jump, okay? So let, let me just talk about this big jump. Last week, we were um, in the story in chapter 3 of Peter and John healing the, the crippled man. And now we jump all the way to Acts 17, and we're in the middle of Paul doing his thing. And so one of the things that I think is important, and one of the reasons I drew all of these resources, is so that you can, you can use this PowerPoint to help fill in some of the narrative gaps. Now, of course, you, there's a big gap from chapter 3 to chapter 17, but you can just work through these and kind of recap the story if you want. 
Like, for example, if you just jump in, let me just take you to a cartoonist guide to acts and just show you how this works. Um, every single page, all 43 pages are on this website as a standalone page. And so you can use this table of contents to hyperlink to it. So last week, you know, we were in chapter three with this image of the healing, right? So if we go back to the home page, you can kind of, you might even use this image of the table of contents to help walk your people say, well, what's happened between chapter three and chapter uh, uh, 17 is so much. We cover, we jump over the entire section of Judea and Samaria where we've got Philip with in Samaria with the, the eunuch We've got Saul's encounter. We've got Ananias and Saul. We've got Peter's healings. We've got the Peter and Cornelius story. We've got uh, Paul's first journey. And we have the Jerusalem council and all that went down there. And then Paul and Silas we've, uh, through Lydia. And so maybe what you might want to do is jump in right here in Acts chapter 15, just to kind of roll into the story where we've got um, Paul and Paul in his Macedonian vision, where they cross over into Macedonia, they meet Lydia in Philippi, and then we go to page 25, and you'll see that we have all that goes on in the city of Philippi, where the young girl is delivered from this uh, spirit of prophecy, and uh, Paul and Silas are imprisoned because of delivering this young girl, and they're in prison. There's a big earthquake. There's a jailbreak. The a Philippian jailer and his whole household uh, come to Christ. They're, they're, they find salvation. And Paul goes back and says goodbye to Lydia. And it, it is from that moment that they leave Philippi and they're on their way to Amphipolis, to Apollonia, and to Thessalonica. And this is the story. Now we're in the story. And in Thessalonica, Paul comes to the synagogue. And at first, the Jews are receptive of his message, as is typically the case. But then it says some Jews became jealous of Paul and Silas. And so they, they recruit some rabble rousers and to, you know, big thugs to kind of take care of Paul and Silas. And they get out of town. Paul and Silas, they escape. But so they, the crowd drags Jason, the leader of the synagogue, before the Greek magistrate in Thessalonica. And he's like, why do I care about this? So there's all kinds of uh, political implications going on in this story. And again, if you download this mega pack, uh, the story, the text itself is on slide 362, which is kind of in the middle. We just come over here. There it is, 362. And you can just walk through uh, Paul in the synagogue the crowd getting uh, riled up by the thugs, and then the uh, Jason being dragged in front of the magistrate. So there's a lot going on, a huge narrative jump uh, between last week and this week. So uh, I hope some of these images might be helpful for you. You can pick and choose the ones you want to use. If you download the whole JPEG pack, you can just you know pick the images and put them in your own presentation. And then the correlating gospel. Again, the narrative lectionary people choose a gospel because lots of worship contexts want to have a gospel reading. Um, and so the gospel comes from Mark 13, which is where Jesus predicts and tells and warns his disciples that they will be persecuted. And I think that this text was chosen because uh, Paul and Silas were being persecuted because they were proclaiming the message of Jesus. And again, you can download Mark 13 uh, the eschatological uh, prophecies and words of Jesus in Mark right here. Click on that to download that one and boom. All right, so that's what I've got for both lectionaries this week. And again, uh, each week I want to just remind you and invite you to study the book of Acts during this Easter season. If you haven't already jumped in on that, there's three ways you can do it. You can read the graphic novel. Uh, online or you can buy it in print and you can watch my eight-part video series just click here to explore that uh, or you can use my heart house uh, bible study that i put together about 20 years ago it's got a lot of images in it you know 20 years ago as i was illustrating through acts 
I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, but then the big one is the most recent, uh, the Faith Lead Academy course is now available. This is a power packed course. It's got 12 modules, multiple voices, a whole team went into making it. And I'd love to have you check that out. There you go. This is week four of the Easter season in 2024. The, the text for April 21st. Thank you for joining me. Again, I'm a, an artist, a seminary professor, and a pastor. I put these visual resources together for you so that you and your people can grow deeper in the love of God through Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit for the sake of the world. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.